What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where today, it is Monday, it is very late Monday. Please accept my sincerest apologies. Uh, I am running very far behind today. We had a nasty cold front. I think most of us have had a nasty cold front move through. We've got winter weather storms advisory. We've got ice. It's pouring outside, turning to sleet, and apparently snow later. And it turns out uh, our governor has issued a state of emergency for uh, a huge portion of our counties due to this storm that is, uh, well, it's already here. Temperatures have been ridiculously cold and I did not make it to Copart today, so I'm just gonna give you guys a heads up. There will be no Copart walk around this week. I am not driving an hour to the city so that I can go walk around in the nasty, nasty, cold, wet weather and get sick. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna try to make up for the Copart walk arounds this week by giving you car content. I'm gonna do my best to get some work done on the AMC, whatever we can get done, we will get done. And we're gonna try to get some work done on, let me spin around here, the, uh, what is this again? The MGB. <laughs> try to get some work done on the MGB this week as well, but today it is your weekly, I'm, I'm tempted to call it like a weekly auction roundup. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what to call it. Anyway, it's gonna be the auction results from Copart this week. Obviously, you know that I won two cars at auction this week, and I bought a third car this week. So we ended up with the AMC, what is this? An AMC Ambassador 990 in Kansas, not an auction car, barn find. Then we ended up from Copart winning the 2000 Saturn LW1. And then we also won from Copart a 2007 Chrysler Pacifica. And let's see, $850 I think is what I paid for the Pacifica, $325 is what I paid for the Saturn, $2,500 bucks for the AMC. So that's what I bought this week. We're gonna go through uh, autoauctions.io as usual. We're gonna go through the list. We're gonna see what the cars went for at auction and you guys get to comment below and tell me if you think they were good deals or bad deals. So without further ado, let's jump into this and get started with number one. So number one on my list is of course the 1947 Ford pickup truck that we saw. It sold for $7,200 being sold by a third party. Now this one is interesting and this is part of why autoauctions.io is so important. I wanna stress it's not sponsored, but this is very important. So you can take a look at it and this is definitely the pickup truck that we were looking at. Runs, drives, shows a clean title. Then underneath it, it says certificate of title rebuilt. Now, what's interesting about this is when you scroll down, you can see the lot sold for $6,100 three years ago. So let's find out why. It didn't run, it didn't drive, it had a salvage title flood damage in Houston. Houston, that means salt water. So you click the pictures and try to get a better idea of what's going on here. And as you scroll through them, you will quickly find that there is definitely salt water damage in here. Look underneath the steering column and you can see white salt all over the carpeting. Now, if you wonder how high the flood got in this, that's pretty easy. You just take a look at the water line right here towards the top of the picture. You can see very faintly a yellow line, meaning the water had been over halfway above the driver's side door. This is one, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> truthfully, AutoAuctions.io would have absolutely saved me if I was going to purchase this, absolutely not going to. Now you're probably thinking, well, it's an old truck, so salt water is not that big of a deal because there's not a whole lot of wiring harnesses or anything, but you have to remember that this is not just an old truck, guys. This is an LS swapped truck right here, okay? Custom gauges, there's gonna be lots of wiring looms, lots of wiring harnesses, lots of connectors that can definitely be affected by salt water. So this is one I would have stayed completely away from. Next on my list is a 2006 Bentley Continental GT. Of course, we had to do this one, right? Beautiful car, shows to have a clean and clear title. Seller declined $24,600 on October 20th, but they accepted $24,700 just recently. So this is sold, 68,000 miles. No negative history that we could find on autoauctions.io about the Bentley. So that one is a pretty clean cut, straightforward and to the point. 
Let's move on to the next one. Next, we have the 2020 Ford Mustang GT. Again, I think this is gonna be a pretty clean and cut and dry, straight to the point type of deal. Sold for $15,200. I think the pictures and the video I showed you really uh, speak volumes on this one. This one was just, it was hammered hard. Now, this is one that I think it made a lot of sense to actually go out there and view the damage for yourself because when you're looking at the pictures, it's like, okay, you know, it's, it's damaged, but it's not that bad. But if you remember the video, I showed you the undercarriage damage and it was awful, guys. It was really, really bad on this one. So 15,000 miles on the clock, significant undercarriage damage, and it sold for $15,200. Next, we have the 2016 Subaru WRX Limited that sold for 7100 bucks. This one was honestly pretty simple. I think a frame shop could have got this thing pulled out and ready for panels in no time at all. And we all know that Weird Beard could have done something like this on his trailer. Like you've seen him physically pull frames and pull aprons and skirts and everything with a trailer and a come along that he's got. He's got a lot of ingenuity, guys. This is a guy that can make just about anything out of whatever you've got laying around. So I can assure you, if Weird Beard had gotten his hands on this, he would have had this car fixed in no time at all. And it probably would, well, what is it he always says? It's no big deal. It's no big deal, it's just metal. Now for me, and probably for a lot of you, you know, we would have to send this somewhere because we don't have the skill set to do something like this, but Weird Beard could have, and I think the price was very, very good on this one. Now, I don't know, it says uh, estimated retail value is 14.9. Sometimes these can be inflated a little bit. That's not on autoauctions.io. They actually get this information from the Salvage Auctions website. So it's really hard to say if this car was really worth 14.9 with 110,000 miles and the damage listed. I, you know, who knows? But it did sell for $7,100. So I'm going to rely on you, fine folks out there, to comment below and tell me if $7,100 was a fair price for this 2016 Subaru WRX. Next, we have the 2015 Audi A3 Premium. You guys remember this one? It looks great in the pictures. It it looks really good. No airbags deployed, nothing that would really make you think anything's terribly wrong with it other than a little damage to the front bumper here. But if you remember right, it doesn't start. Obviously, it doesn't drive because there was a giant hole in the oil pan. Undercarriage damage, it ran over something, and the oil pan had been pretty much completely destroyed. So that's not to say it won't start. It might. Maybe they didn't try to start it because they knew about it, or maybe the engine is seized up because it was run without oil. Either way, it sold for $5,300, and it says the estimated retail value is $11,173. So if you're willing to put a little bit of work into this one, I think this could have been a great car for somebody if you could get away with just replacing the oil pan and possibly touching up the front bumper. Next, the 2007 Mazda RX-8. That, I don't know. I suspect that it was some noise coming from the clutch area, and it could have been. It also could have been rear bearings on the crankshaft. It sounded like it was definitely coming from the back of the motor or the front of the transmission area. Sold for $25.50. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think that was a good idea, even though it does run, even though it does move and it is a stick shift and the body was decent, the interior was decent. Uh, motors for these things, if they are needed, can be very, very expensive unless you know exactly where to get parts. 84,000 miles, which is generally when these cars are going to be having problems with the apex seal or seals. Uh, I don't know guys, I don't know. I've bought a couple of these I think for less than what this one just sold for and they were both in far better condition. Now you can see that the previous winning bids on October 13th were $1,700 and then again October 16th for $1,800. So it looks like they finally got what they were looking for out of it and they sold it for $2,550. Again, this may not have been severe damage. It could have been something as simple as taking out the clutch, replacing the pilot bearing. It, that literally could have been it. I don't know. I don't know if it really was something that simple, then I would say this is probably a very good deal. But if it gets internal to the engine, I'm going to say this is a very bad deal. Unfortunately, there is no way you're going to know without buying the car 
and pulling the transmission first. You remember the 2013 Dodge Dart, right? The turbo Dart that just had some, <laughs> it had a slew of issues, guys. This one was in pretty rough shape, just all the way around this one was in rough shape. It was a run and drive. The interior was nasty. The body had scratches, dents, dings. It didn't have any power. It didn't want to hardly move. Uh, the radio screen was busted. Yeah, I'm sorry, but in my opinion, $2,800 was not a good deal on this one. Uh, 92,000 miles on the clock, but it did have a clean title. Uh, I, I still think $2,800 plus fees on top of it, plus the car needed a ton of work, guys. In my opinion, this one was not a winner. We looked at this one for my buddy Eli. This is a 2017 Ford Expl I mean, uh, sorry, sorry. 2017 Land Rover Range Rover insurance car. Honestly, in my opinion, very minimal damage that you could absolutely DIY fix at home. It sold for $12,700. Take a look at the pictures for those of you that maybe didn't see the Copart walk around with this in it. Here are the photos. It was actually in phenomenal shape. Phenomenal shape, guys. Uh, low miles, 26,000 miles on the odometer. Had a little bit of damage, as you can see from this front picture right here. Now, luckily, the uh, radiator and the air conditioning condenser were a little bit tweaked, but they were not damaged. The AC still worked. It was still full of coolant. The, uh, yeah, the intercooler, I forgot what I was talking about here. The intercooler here was definitely damaged, needed to be replaced, and we had a little damage to the driver's side. It's not the frame rail. It's like that frame extension piece that's, that's designed to be tweaked in an accident to prevent damage to the actual frame itself, if you can even, if you can even call that a frame, really, because these are unibody type vehicles. This is something that I think with replacing this piece right here, that frame extension, the inner cooler, and unfortunately it did not come with a bumper, it did not come with the sensors, the headlights, you know, it's gonna need some parts, but still, I think this was a pretty fair deal. And the estimated repair cost was $24,115. Retail value, $34,154. Assuming that's correct, at 12.7, I think this was a steal. And the one that most of you are gonna be most disappointed I did not purchase is the 1992 Fire Mustang. This is literally something you could call a fire-breathing Mustang GT. It was in exceptional condition. I hesitate to say that because of the fire damage. Uh, you know, prior to the fire damage, I believe this really was an exceptional condition. Beautiful car that showed something like 3,000 miles. I, I, I still don't know, guys. I still don't know. And it seems like a lot of you are really confused about this one as well. It's probably most likely 103,000 miles. I'll agree that that's probably what it is. But at the same time, the interior was so perfect, it really, it made it hard to believe that that was 103,000 miles. Uh, obviously, lots of burn damage. It says the estimated repair cost was $6,402, and the estimated retail value was $7,182. So, you know, it is what it is. You guys can comment below and decide for amongst yourselves if you feel this was a good deal or if you think it was a bad deal. Personally, in my opinion, $3,000 plus fees out the door. To me, this car just wasn't worth it. Next, we had a 2007 Chrysler Pacifica Touring that we looked at. Do you guys recognize this car? Does anybody recognize this car? Yeah, okay, $850. I like to show the cars I won too. That way there's no discrepancies. There's nobody out there saying I'm lying about the price. I was deceitful or dishonest with you. It's it's nothing like that, guys. So you can see I paid $850 and for whatever reason, it doesn't want to click on the car. This is a great time for the internet to mess up. There we go. Okay, so here it is. Here's the pictures and I'm looking at the driver's side rear wheel right here and I don't see it bent like it has that broken arm that we found, but I will be the, ah, ah, yes it is. Yes it is, so this puts to rest any questions that we had about that rear wheel, whether it was actually broken, not the wheel itself, but the arm back there. It's kind of like a control arm, something like that. I ended up buying the part for $48, but you can clearly see in this middle picture, the wheel is absolutely twisted 
So this was not damage that occurred at Copart. And this is another good reason to look at autoauctions.io and get a really good glimpse of the high res pictures. When you come through here, I'll show you, you click on this picture and it actually makes it huge. It's massive. You can really see the damage here. You can see how this wheel is totally tweaked in this picture. So no doubt about it, the damage was there when we picked up the car. And I still think $850 was a steal of a deal on this one. Next, so many of you loved this car, including myself, the 99 Prelude that honestly was in extremely good condition. I kind of wish I'd bought this one. Not going to lie. I, I really wish I'd picked this one up. $2,050. Very, very minor damages, guys. It's never been listed before. <sighs> this was a good deal. I should have got it. I'll be the first to admit, even with 200,000 miles on it, I should have bought this car. You can see there is some minor suspension damage to the back. That wheel is damaged, and there was a little bit of damage to the driver's side door. I don't know if we're going to be able to see that or not. Uh, if you saw the video right there, very clear, very clear. This is another reason I really love using autoauctions.io, guys, is you can really see the high-res pictures and get more details so you can really see any damages that might be hidden by some of the lower res pictures. Anyway, there it is, 2,000 bucks out the door. This is one I absolutely regret missing out on. How about that 2000 Mercedes CLK 430 we looked at? I'm truthfully surprised that it sold for this cheap. I really am. $625, do I think that I should have picked this up? Do I think I lost out on this one? I'll be honest with you guys, no. Not even for $625. I still would not have paid that for this car. Was it worth it? Maybe to somebody, but to me, no. This car was just, it was pretty nasty. And I feel like with it being as, as nasty as it was, chances are there's gonna be a lot more wrong with the car other than just a few cosmetic pieces on the front. There's probably gonna be some mechanical issues that are gonna need worked out, maintenance items that need to be addressed, and in my opinion, this was a good one to avoid. Now, for whatever reason, this one is not showing the picture, but this is the 2002 Porsche Boxster that, yeah, no. Um, it looks like this one has been relisted, and in fact, it doesn't even look like anybody won it. It doesn't show any previous winning bids that were declined or anything, just nothing. I have to admit the interior of this one was in awful shape. The paint was in horrible condition. It does have a Kansas rebuilt salvage title, plus it has the transmission that nobody wants, the automatic, and even though it's listed as a run and drive, I could not get it to start. In fact, I couldn't get it to do anything other than blare the horn at me and embarrass me in the middle of Copart. And for those of you that doubted, I won my 2000 Saturn LW1 for $325 with 300,000 miles on the clock. Here is your proof. Bingo. There she is, guys. Very, very minor damage, guys. Like this one had a, a broken tail light and a little bit of a scuff on the back bumper right here see if we can there you go you can see that it's got scratches on the bumper a teeny tiny ding by the tail light here and the broken tail light itself but in reality this car actually runs drives and rides very well very well well worth the 325 dollar winning bid now it says the damage was 133 percent of the value Estimated repair cost $2,286, and I agree that's probably correct if you're going to replace this whole quarter panel, the light, the bumper, at which point the car is not worth it. But guys, who's going to do that much work to a 2000 Saturn station wagon with 300,000 miles? Like, nobody. Nobody's going to do that kind of work to this car. It will make an excellent daily driver. It will make an excellent gas sipper commuter car for somebody or for some family. And I think I stole it at $325. Last one on the list is the 2015 Chevy Sonic. I'm sure you guys remember this one. So many of you called out some defects that I missed. Again, there's no pictures. I'm not sure why that is. 
but this one had a Texas Certificate of Title rebuilt salvage. 76,000 miles, if you remember right, there was lots of paint chipping and cracking all over the front end, and I knew immediately there were definitely some underlying issues with this car, and it was probably best to steer clear of it. But some of you noticed, I have not verified this, but some of you noticed and commented that this car had bent fender aprons. Now, I did not see that, and if I missed it, that was truly negligent on my part, and I do apologize, but that's part of the benefit of having you guys watching these videos so that if I miss something, you can call it out and call my attention to it. Still, for me, at $2,400, I would not have touched this 2015, uh, 2015 Chevy Sonic. I never, never at all was not interested and I'm glad that it sold to somebody and hopefully it turns out to be a great car for them. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It is, it is getting colder by the minute out here. It truly is. It's barely above freezing right now. Ah, oh, but thankfully I got these heaters going, man. And I am happy to say these things are rocking keeping this place warm. This place is, it's fairly large. It really is. It's a uh, 30 by 40 by 12. And these two $1,100 units are keeping it nice and warm. It's definitely very comfortable. I actually just turned them up. I had them at 68. And as you can see, well, they're doing their job keeping the temperature in here right where I want it to be. So I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. I know we're going to miss out on Copart walkarounds this week, but this gives me a little more time to try to catch up on some of the car content. I do need to get the fuel system completed on this. We need to figure out a solution for the fuel system on this one as well. I want this one running and driving down the road this week under its own power. I want to actually take this out on a real drive on the road. And I want this one to be back together. I want the, the factory fuel components to all be installed. I am not going to put the interior back on this one yet because I'm ordering a whole new interior for it with the exception of the seats. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about the seats yet, guys. I'll figure that out later. But for now, these seats will work just fine. So I'll probably bolt one seat into it. Heck, I might bolt both of them, but I'm going to leave the carpet and everything out. I'm going to talk to Weird Beard about a couple little, little holes. I don't think this car requires like entire floor panels to be replaced. But if he's interested, if he has the time, I'm going to talk to him about patching these. But instead, temporarily, well, you guys are going to love this. <laughs> Actually, you guys are probably going to hate this. But what I'm going to do um, in the meantime is this is Gorilla Tape. This is waterproof Gorilla Tape. You're supposed to be able to stick this stuff to just about anything and it keeps water out. So to help prevent water from getting in through the bottom of the floors, I'm going to clean up these rust spots and I'm going to put this in place to just patch things up temporarily until we can figure out a more permanent solution. But we are going to get an interior. We're getting a new center console. We're getting the new radio bezel. We're getting a new glove box. We're getting new door panels, new carpets, uh, just everything. We're going to make this thing look really, really good because I, well, as much as I want to drive it, I'm not taking this thing outside right now with the current weather. So it's going to have to sit for a little while, but I want it together and I want it ready to go. The tail light for the Saturn came in. So we're going to put that on. We're going to get that car detailed. It should be getting down the road this week to Weed Beards for sale. The Chrysler Pacifica, hopefully that part comes in that this week. We can get it detailed and get it up for sale. And this should be a pretty productive week. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. If you have any friends or family that might be interested in this, in this type of content, feel free to share the video with them as well. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. I would appreciate that very much. You can follow me, speaking of, on Facebook and Instagram at Auto Auction Rebuilds. And until next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I'm going to catch you guys very, very soon in the next one.